Properly setting up and using a meter mix system can be quite a challenge. Today, we're going to show you how to set up a meter mix system for use with Franklin Adhesives and Polymers EPI adhesives. This demonstration is in a lab setting using a drum and a pail. Normal production would be using a tote and a drum. Section 1. Mixer Setup To begin the installation of the meter mix machine, you need to prepare the area where the mixer will be installed. The mixer should be on a level surface and protected from any debris. The drums or totes need to be positioned above the mixer. They should be at least three feet above the suction side of the pump. We recommend having a two-tiered setup of hardener drums with a clear tube connecting them for a visual indication of hardener level. Once the hardener cascade is set up, affix a desiccant dryer in the three-quarter inch bung on the top of the top of the drum. Install the hoses on the resin and hardener containers, making sure the discharge valves on both components are closed. Reference page 4 in the manual for diagram and the order of the fittings from the supply container to the pumps. We recommend using pipe tape or thread sealant on all threaded fittings. Also, secure the cam arms or ears to prevent them from opening with either a pin or zip ties. Once both supply hoses are connected, confirm the valves are closed and begin the installation of the discharge hoses. Connect the resin hose to the discharge port on the pump closest to the air cylinder. This hose is a half-inch Teflon stainless steel braided hose with swivel ends. Using a box end wrench, tighten the hose connection until snug. Do not over-tighten. Connect the other end of the resin hose to the discharge manifold. There must be a one-half inch check valve between the hose and the manifold. The exact series of connections is on page 39 in the manual. Next, you should connect the hardener hose to the discharge port on the pump closest to the pivot point on the machine. This hose is a one-quarter inch Teflon stainless steel braided hose with swivel ends. Using a box end wrench, tighten the hose connection until snug. Do not over tighten. Connect the other end of the hardener hose to the discharge manifold. There must be a one quarter inch check valve between the hose and the manifold. The exact series of connections is on page 39 in the manual. The air supply must be a minimum of 70 PSI in order for the equipment to function correctly and be properly conditioned with an air dryer. Connect the air supply into the half inch brass ball valve. We recommend an air supply hose be installed onto a quick connect air fitting. You will need to supply the air fittings. In order to obtain the full capability of a mixer, the air supply should be 70 PSI and the air connection to the mixer should be as close to one half inch as possible to limit pressure loss. When ready to run the mixer, make sure to fully open the brass ball valve to allow the air pressure to build in the unit and allow it to run. If the valve is only partially open, it will bleed all air pressure to prevent the mixer from running. You will hear a loud hissing noise if the valve is not in the correct position. The oil cup on top of the pump should be filled one-third to one-half full with Mesmol or an equivalent product from a local supplier. The oil in the cup serves two purposes, to act as lubrication for the pump and to act as a barrier fluid to prevent the components from leaking out. Section 2. Priming the pumps. Rotate the pressure regulator clockwise until the regulator reads 20 to 25 PSI, which is the minimum needed to cycle the unit. Next, you should open the manual supply valves from the resin and hardener containers. Open the manual ball valves for both the resin and hardener on the lower T after the pump. Obtain a waste container to catch first material coming out of the pumps and position it below the open valves. Press the foot pedal to begin priming the system. Depending on the length of hose and position relative to the pump, one ingredient may be primed faster than the other. Typically, the hardener takes longer to prime because the length of the stroke is much shorter it may be necessary to manually prime this pump. Next, I will walk you through this process. First, you should cycle the pumps so they are at the top of their stroke. Then turn off the air supply to the system temporarily so no one can accidentally cycle the pump while it's being worked on. Remove the lower pins from the hardener pump, resin pump, and the air cylinder. Next, you will need to swing the pivot arm out of the way at least 90 degrees or more. Then insert a metal rod through the slot in the piston where the pin used to be located. Manually cycle the pump up and down a few times until hardener is observed coming out the ratio check valve. Once both pumps are primed, swing the pivot arm back in place and reinstall the pins in each of the cylinders. Be careful to keep the piston aligned so the reinstallation goes smoothly because the pins are a snug fit. 
Section 3. Ratio Check The mixer should be set to the correct ratio upon receipt. Please confirm the ratio has been set correctly. See page 21 in manual for the ratio settings. Both pumps should be primed from the previous sequence, but if not, please refer back to section 2. First, you need to open the manual ball valve on the bottom of the T coming out of the pumps. Run mixer for 3 to 5 cycles to purge system of air and discard the captured material. One cycle is a full stroke up and down of the air piston. Using a bench top scale, weigh 2 cups and record weight. Each cup should be able to hold at least 16 ounces. Place one cup under the resin and one cup under the hardener valve. The pump should be running when the cups are inserted and removed from material streams. You will need to collect three to five cycles of material in the cups. This is to eliminate the variation in start up and shut down. Please be careful when collecting the material because a slight variation in the hardener amount can change the measured ratio. Please remember it's important that both cups go into and out of the respective fluid streams at the same time. Reweigh the now partially full cups of resin and hardener and record the weight. Make sure to subtract out the weight of the cup to determine the amount of each component in the cup. Divide the weight of the hardener by the weight of the resin. This mixer is set up for a 15.5 to 100 ratio, which would be 0.155. The allowable variation is plus or minus 2%. See page 9 and 16 in the manual for another example and additional detail. Section 4. Running the mixer. After confirming the ratio is correct in Section 3, allow the minimal material in the pipe to drain and close the ratio check ball valves. Then open the resin and hardener ball valves on the top of the T. During the initial setup, or when the hoses are changed, you need to arrange the discharge hoses in a way where they run uphill and away from the pump so that the fluid forces the air out of the hoses. Position a waste container under the discharge manifold. Next, press down on the foot pedal and allow the material to flow uphill through the hoses and into the discharge manifold. The length of hose your unit is equipped with will dictate the number of cycles it will take to fill the hose. Once a white stream of resin and a brown stream of hardener begins coming out of the two ports, you must run the mixer for an additional three cycles to make sure there are no air bubbles in the streams. You need to run at fast speed to make sure any air in the system is pushed out, set to a suggested process speed of 60 PSI. Allow material to drain from the manifold and install the static mixer. Hand tighten the retaining nut onto the manifold. Do not over tighten because it may crack the static mixer. Position the now installed static mixer on the manifold over the coating device. For this lab demonstration, the mixer is being positioned over a waste container. Press down on the foot pedal and visually observe a brown stripe and a white stripe of product at the top of the static mixer. As the material flows down the length of the static mixer, observe how the brown stripe fades and the color of the glue changes from white to an almond color. If you observe a change in the visual appearance of the stream, that indicates a problem and it should be investigated. Refer to Troubleshooting Guide for additional information. The flow rate is adjusted by changing the pressure on the regulator. The minimum pressure required to run the mixer is 20 to 25 PSI and gives an estimated flow rate of 2.5 pounds per minute. At 100 PSI, the flow rate is estimated at 18 pounds per minute. Section 5. Shutdown. We will demonstrate an extended shutdown sequence, but we will indicate quicker stopping points for use as necessary. For a quick stop, 30 minutes or less. The first step is to turn off air supply to mixer. The air supply is turned off to prevent anyone from turning on the mixer while unattended. For a break of 30 minutes or more, or at the end of the shift. After completing step one, you will need to remove static mixer, attach it to the flushing station, and flush it thoroughly with water for 10 minutes, or until the water coming out of the mixer is clear. For step three, you need to clean the threads on the discharge manifold. Put a small amount of grease in the end cap and on the threads to prevent adhering the end cap to the discharge manifold. And finally, hand tighten the end cap onto the discharge manifold. For more than a 14 day shutdown, you need to complete steps one through three and add the following steps. Step four, flush the hardener pump and discharge lines with a solvent such as acetone. At the same time, flush the resin pump and discharge lines with water. First, you need to close the valves on the resin and hardener hoses and disconnect the supply hoses from the mixer, 
allow any residual material in the hoses to drain into a pail. This can be added back into the supply tanks as available. Next, you need to install the supplied feed tanks on each of the pumps. Fill the hardener tank with acetone and the resin tank with water, hot water if available. Run the mixer and collect the material coming out of the discharge manifold in a waste container. Run until the streams look hazy. This should be about one gallon. This will be a blend of resin, hardener, acetone, and water. Next, you need to remove the hoses from the discharge manifold. You will need to then recirculate the acetone and water through the hoses and back into the feed tanks. Circulate the acetone and water for five to 10 minutes. Next, remove spent acetone and water and repeat recirculation procedure for an additional five to 10 minutes with fresh materials. Remove all spent acetone into a metal container that is bonded and grounded to the mixer. The spent water can be disposed of following local disposal regulations. Purge about one quart of acetone and water through the ratio check ports into the same disposal containers and run the pumps dry. Next, you will need to fill system with Mesmol or local equivalent. Reinstall the hoses into the discharge manifold and then run 16 ounces of Mesmol through the ratio check port and 16 ounces of Mesmol through the discharge manifold. Wipe down the ratio check port and clean threads on the discharge manifold. Put a small amount of grease in the end cap and on the threads to prevent the end cap from adhering to the discharge manifold. And finally, hand tighten the end cap onto the discharge manifold. Thank you.